Week 8, Problem 5. Figure below is a graph of the magnetic flux through a certain coil of wire as a function of time during an interval. While the radius of the coil is increased, the coil is rotated through 1.5 and the external source of the magnetic field off in that order. What? Okay. Whew. Yeah, a whole bunch of stuff happened. Rank the electromagnetic force induced in the coil at the instance marked A through O. Through the positive value to the largest value, negative value. Use only greater than or equal to, no less than. Do not include any parentheses around the letters or symbols. Okay. So they gave us all these details. Don't matter. Pretty sure this is Lenz's Law. Lenz's Law. Which would make more sense if it was an optics. But it's not. They have too many, they name too many things after people. I think this is probably political. All right, epsilon equals negative d phi dt. All right, so I'm going to start by writing this guy down because it's all that really matters this problem. So flux equals, all right, hop, blue, hop. So this is voltage. It's electromagnetic force. Basically think of it exactly as voltage. This is flux, V dot A, that, uh, terrible, is a uh, time derivative. See, I just rewrote that, gave you no new information. And that, that's a negative sign. Okay, so, eh, I grow weary of this fine-tipped pen. I'm gonna draw again with my Crayola. Hope. there we go. Much more satisfying. Feels like I'm drawing with a Sharpie. All right. <clears throat> so this is a, this is a um, graph of flux. This is graph of time. We have flux. We have time. Bam. So now we just need to look at these all in order. So we want from from the largest value to the largest value to the largest rank a from the largest positive value to the largest magnitude negative value. Okay. So we want to. I think this one is largest to smallest. So let's see here. So I'm just going to start by picking things out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the derivatives with respect to time. And by that, I mean I'm going to look at the tangent lines. So this guy right here, whoop, right there. Place it right on C. I'm going to call that good. So that's pretty positive. So this guy is probably going to be the most positive, but we have a negative, so it's probably going to actually be the ne negative. So I'm going to start by finding the guy that's the most. All right, so this guy, I know is going to be the most negative. Nope. So I know he's going to be here. All right, now I'm going to look at another point. Let's look at the second most biggest. So D is 0, B is 0, A is negative. So let's see here. E is, eh, they're about the same. So let's start with, I'll say the next one might be E. So I'm going to look at E real quick. Compare this guy. That look tangent line? Tangent line? Yeah, it looks pretty tangent. Maybe a little bit up. There we go. So that's probably the how down it is. Oh yeah, that's much bigger. Yeah, I would say much bigger. It may possibly be bigger depending on my skills of understanding life. So I'm going to say E is the most negative slope, but since it's a negative deflux dt, I'm actually going to rate it the highest, followed by A. So we got A. So the only ones we got this guy, that guy. So all we need is B and D. That guy is flat, so is B. So I'm going to do B equals D. So E is greater than A, greater than B equals D. You could probably do equal D equals B there. Yeah, same thing, same thing. Greater than C. All right. So at which instance, at which instance have zero electromagnetic force or zero voltage? Which is the way I like to think of it. Select all that apply. So B and D because D flux dt at B and D are zero because they have horizontal um, tangent lines. The slope is zero. So B and D. I'm going to treat this like one of those standardized tests with my number two pencil. And I am coloring it in 
fully color in. I assume it's on those scan rods it's always okay if you color outside the box. Well, that's all there is to this guy. Bam. Linda's Law. Alright. See you on the next one. Prom 6.